with us today, Akral. Hey guys, I'm excited to be here and go through this chapter with you. We have Sean and Noel here at the KWA office. Woo! <laughs> 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 Um, yes. And I'm Crystal Kelsey. I'm the team lead alternate here. Um, if you need any help, feel free to pop into the office. I'm here for you. And let's get started with misunderstandings. So we have six misunderstandings that we're going to be going over. You know, if you put in garbage in, you're going to be getting garbage out. And let me just move this over a little bit. So, um, as Gary says, you know, fears are educated into us. And if we wish we can, if they can be educated out. How do you feel about that statement? I love that statement. I, I believe kind of your, your thoughts and your emotions kind of can take over you. What you put in yourself is kind of what you, you get out. What's that bold law? It's escaping me. Um, what's that bold law? Your thoughts your thoughts eavesdrops on yourselves or something like that. If, if anyone knows what that uh, bold law is I'm referring to, it's essentially this, what you, you kind of put out there really comes back to you. And I wholeheartedly believe that. Yeah, I absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And you know, at your best, your beliefs can have you have great confidence, but at the, your worst, it's going to be extreme doubt and mm -hmm. keep you paralyzed and not take an action. And I think one thing they'll add to that is I think we go so far, focused on the fear instead of what the positive outcome could be. So thinking about changing your thought process, because so many of us, I know myself, I go to what's the worst case that could happen or what's the fear that's around that instead of what could happen? What, why am I feeling this fear? What's the root cause of that? And just kind of diving a little bit deeper with yourself and just reprogramming those fear thoughts, fearful thoughts that you have. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. Anyone else have any, this is, we want to keep this kind of an open forum and have your mics on. Let's not be muted. What do some, some of you think about this statement? How do you feel about fear and how it's programmed into you? Anyone? I love it, Rachel, because, because I think it was Henry Ford that said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Mm -hmm. That's another great, great quote that, that slips right in with that. You know, if you, if you, whatever your, whatever your mindset is, that's what will follow. I absolutely agree with that. I love that. Anything else anyone has? For those of you that are just jumping on now, we're talking about fears are educated into us and can, if we wish, can be educated out. What are some programmings that you have along around fear and uh, based emotions? Anyone? Yeah, we'll carry uh, on. I think like, Sean, yeah. Go ahead. Like, like cold calling, or like, like warmly. It's like, you know, sometimes you can be easy to kind of approach some situations, maybe not a person. But, you know, I, I think that if you already think that you're going to get anything out from it, then you, you won't. Yeah. Right? Were you guys Absolutely able to hear great. Sean in the back there? Do you guys repeat what he just said? Yeah, thumbs up, you're able to hear? It's a bit garbled, um, Crystal and Rachel. Oh, okay. All right, so I'll have to get you. Yeah. To get Essentially what Sean was saying is around cold calling. So when many of us are cold calling, we're already potentially planning the outcome of that, of saying, oh, we're not gonna get the lead or whatever mm -hmm. programming, whatever fear we have around cold calling, instead of changing our mindset to being a bit more positive of, okay, I'm gonna book an appointment today, cold calling. I know it's not all of our favorite things to do, but we can make it be one of our favorite things to do and calling strangers and having the mindset that we are gonna get that appointment out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, is that when we're thinking that and we're showing up that way, you know, how are you showing up? What kind of energy are you bringing mm -hmm. into that phone call? Exactly. You know, yes. If you're bringing that negative vibe, then the other person's going to pick up on that. 100% agree. There is, there is Yes. It's true. Noel was just saying that the phone, the more you put off cold calling and uh, making these calls, the phone just gets heavier and heavier. It's not going to get lighter at the end of a month after you have made the calls. Just it will get lighter the more you do it. 
Yeah. Practice makes perfect. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Build that muscle. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, let's move along. So our first, the first common myth understanding. So the myth is, I can't do it. But in all reality, until you try, you can't possibly know what you can or cannot do. And so let's think about that for a moment. You know, have you ever felt that you can't do something, that it wasn't possible? And how did you go ahead and actually try and, and find out that you can actually follow through and it wasn't as bad as, a, as you had thought it was going to be? How do some people view that? What are, I'd love to hear some feedback around that and personal experiences. I know for me, um, my biggest thing is when I feel... I don't like choosing to use the word can't. For me, it's a really harsh word. I really believe anything is possible. Even if it's a really big stretch goal, for me, it's taking some steps backwards of how to get to that goal. Today, that might not be a realistic goal, but it will be in the future. And what are some steps that I can take to get closer to that goal? And for me, it's it's kind of really breaking it down and having a plan. And okay, this is step one, step two, and that will allow me to get closer to my goal. And one of the questions I wrote down as I was reading this chapter is, how do you view success? I think that's a really powerful question that I wrote down a few times. So we have this goal. Once we achieve this goal, does that mean success for you? Or how do you view success? Um, I'm gonna open up the floor to that before I continue and talk more. Like, how do you view success, Crystal? Yeah, success for me is taking action. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that we need to be able to congratulate ourselves along the ways, uh, along the way. And even if we are taking action and maybe we're not getting the outcome that we feel that we were going to get, you need to be able to congratulate yourself that you even took the action. There's so many people that are stuck and they have fear and that holds them back that they, they don't even try. And then before you know it, you're stuck in the same situation that you were before. I would love to hear from you guys. How do you view success? What are, what's your thoughts around success or I can't and your goals to getting closer to I can Out here, we today. have a quiet crowd, but that's okay. <laughs> we will be the voice. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> All right, for me, yeah. just saying is can't and won't are very similar like they're essentially one and the same and it's he said his i'm quoting him here it could come from a lack of uh, laziness or just choosing not to and i i kind of agree with you noel for me i when you say i can't it comes from a root of either fear or what could be the outcome um like what's the conscious or unconscious reason that you're saying i can't um, there's something underneath there that's holding you back. It's not for me, it's not the actual, okay, I'm achieving this. It's, it's either the pain that comes with getting, getting to that point of achieving the goal. Um, it could be many things. So I think getting to the root of why you're saying I can't, what's the unconscious or conscious reason of that? Any, anything? Uh, I'll share, I'll share something here. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Angelie. Um, so one thing that I really struggled with lately, sorry, that's my doorbell. I'm just ignoring it, but, um, is choosing a database. So I have half my database in Sman, half somewhere else. And I was looking for a third one and it's taken me so long. And I kept saying, oh, there's never the perfect one. And I can't, you know, I can't, uh, I can't find it. I keep researching, doing demos, can't do it. Really, I found multiple that would work. I just was scared kind of to make that commitment and uh, had a little push from Jamie Lee and uh, made the decision. And it feels like, oh, 
this weight's been lifted. And, you know, sometimes like you kind of said, I can't, and I won't, they're so similar. And, um, for me, I, you know, just taking that fear out of it and just making a decision. And even if, you know, it doesn't work out, it's okay. You can, you know, it, it held me back, not having just as an example, my database, not having it in one place. And, you know, it really held me back from, there's so many missed opportunities, missed income, missed, you know, so many things from that. I held myself back by not making that decision and just making that decision, not even necessarily having it all in there working yet. Oh God. I just, I feel like lighter. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was just going to say uh, the, the beauty in that, you know, you, you took the steps and like that feeling that you have right now is to just like really remember that feeling so that the next time that you feel like you're not taking action, just look back and see, see how rewarding it was for you to go ahead and make that decision and finalize it. And just to really embrace that, just so that next time, you know, you'll be able to jump into action even quicker. Yeah. And I just want to congratulate you for getting to the point that you're at. Yeah. It's a pretty freeing place <laughs> to be finally to finally have that weight off your shoulders to, yeah. to recognize, okay, I'm fearful of something. What is it? I'm just going to choose and kind of have that the confidence that it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. You're in this position for a reason in it. And it sounds like it has all worked out for you and it's making yeah, your life easier you. and better. So congratulations. Yeah. It's a perfect example though, of I can't or something that we're fearful of or putting off, we're choosing not to do, um, which is it's remarkable. So good job. Any, anyone else? Any, and do you have an I can't scenario putting in the hot seat right now? No, I mean- I Actually, it, oh, sorry. It, this is Ritu. If I could just say one thing, sometimes we all, or not all, many of us strive for perfection. And unless we see that perfect thing happening, we, we step back. But I've mm -hmm. learned that it's all about baby steps. I'm going to get to that point where I'm going to know it inside and out. But if I break it down and I do baby steps, I finally get to where I need to be. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. Fuji, would you like to add on to that? Um, no, I, I think that's good. I mean, the one thing I want to add, like, wouldn't mind adding is that, like, sometimes when something looks challenging, it's like, oh, I don't want to do this, or like, oh, I have to say, I have to say, I have to say, I feel like sometimes taking a step back from it and just surrounding yourself with people who, like, are doing the thing or, or are doing mm -hmm. hard, it's kind of like, okay, right. it gives you more of a pause and okay, let's, let's get back to the fresh eyes and it helps. I love that. Absolutely. Fiji just said taking a step back from it sometimes surrounding yourself with people who are doing it and then stepping back into it really can give you a fresh and clear mindset around it. So I love that. Well, if I can jump in, hi, uh, I'm Roger. Um, sometimes for me, it's um, uh, based on on uh, rejection. So you, you kind of brush that off already, like especially when it comes to uh, uh, you know, I, I, I door knock. So initially getting into it, you know, they're going to say no anyway, or if I'm calling a, a friend, they're going to say no and even though you're coming generously with contribution and help that you you, you might you know you, that that that's hurtful in, in a sense maybe to, to, to some people but what i recently learned in bold is I, I don't get attached to the outcome so i've knocked on a ton a ton of doors in the last couple of months and you know there's been some aggressive uh people and then generally just saying uh, no to me, I don't get attached to the outcome. So if I'm not attached to the outcome, I'm not going to be attached to the rejection. Um, I'm going to continue to do it. Absolutely. Well, it's amazing. And I think that's a pretty powerful place to be when you don't care so much about what other people think of you and you're really not attached to that outcome. You're just out there doing your job and it's going to pay off. And I'm sure you've gotten some leads from that. Just it's been from going out and actually doing the action. It will, will pay off. So perfect example as well. Amazing. Thanks for sharing both of you. Appreciate that. So I just really love this part of the book of it. Of it. Um, I'll just read this over. Like, you know, do you realize that whenever you say I can't do it, that you are assigning limits to your potential? And you know, if you don't know what your ultimate potential is, then how can you possibly judge what is realistic? How do you actually know how far that you are able to go? And it's really, 
refreshing in a sense because when I don't know for me I know that like when I see others out there and they're succeeding then I know that it's possible mm -hmm. that it is is something that I can do as well but when I sit there and I'm saying to myself oh I can't do it I can't do it you're basically building a roof over your head exactly yeah yeah so uh, and this is another thing i've learned from experience is that you know once you try and achieve one thing that you thought might not be possible it becomes easier and easier for you to see the impossible and then achieve it there's been many of times that you know working and working towards a goal and then it comes to fruitation and it is so amazing and you celebrate it and then, of course, there's always going to be more goals, goals because we're forever evolving. So when I look at that goal and I'm wondering, well, am I going to be able to get there? You know, it might seem impossible, but look back at your other achievements that you have done in your lifetime or things that you have overcome. And it just makes you realize that there's so much more potential inside of you than you could ever imagine. And I think one thing I'll add to that, and I, I think I made notes of it later on, but I think it's the perfect segue is often we set this goal for ourselves, and it's whatever that might be, this overarching goal, and we have steps. And I think we forget to celebrate those steps. We just celebrate the biggest goal. I've achieved that. And then we, we celebrate that, but often we forget to celebrate the little steps to get there because that's really where true success and true enjoyment comes from is through that whole process. And I would love to hear from you guys. Do you find that you achieve a goal? You're just fast forwarding to get to this goal that you forget to celebrate those, those wins, those little wins, whether it's now, um, Angela choosing, um, to, to use this database. Like, it seems like you've celebrated that what's the next big step for you. And I, and just continuing to really celebrate those little milestone success. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that because there's never a destination. Never. You know, we're always on this journey. And you know, life goes by so quickly. And if we're not celebrating these small wins, then where's the joy in it? You know, what's the point? Yeah. You know, once you get to that final destination, you're going, you might have a, a hole where you're feeling like, well, is this it? You know, you might not be getting that feeling that you thought you was going to get mm -hmm. because you weren't able to enjoy the, the process of getting there. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, kind of focusing on everything along the way, because I think it's also important for me anyways, because sometimes you've got to reevaluate as you get at each step. And for me, you know, I've, I've had a few goals that have shifted by going up those, you know, stepping like ladder steps, so to speak. And as you get to another step, you learn more and, you know, look at your whether it be life or career you know I had some crazy things happen in the last year and everything that I kind of thought was going to happen well me personally even the last two years right you think about where we've all been at and I think sometimes not just celebrating those little those little wins but even you know the things that don't really work out sometimes looking at them being like taking what you learned from them and and sometimes reevaluating and whether it be like yeah I'm still on track still working towards my goal or like sometimes adjusting it slightly for me um I I love to kind of evaluate and um reflect through the process because life is really short you know yeah I absolutely agree with that. And I love the fact that you mentioned that you evaluate around the, uh, along the way. Um, I find that we're not the same person we were when we first started putting these goals in place. And then yeah. we get to the goal and we've evolved so much and we've grown in so many areas. And if we're not re-evaluating re where we want to go and you know how far we've come, then we might end up somewhere that we actually didn't want to be. Definitely. And I love how you said celebrate also the things that don't go well, because really the failures, I'll call them, is what moves you forward. And that's where real growth happens. So I love that. That's really powerful. You know, Fiji, you had something that you were going to jump in and say there. Um, yeah, no, I was going to say, like, I mean, at the end of the day, we're all, we're all machines to the degree where we, you know, positive negative reinforcement teaches us, right? So yeah. we do something good and then we reward ourselves and go. I better keep doing that. Yeah. 
right? So for me, whenever I close a deal, I'll go out for a fancy dinner or I'll do something nice or uh, retail therapy, whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, but I'll do something and be like, oh, that feels good. So mm -hmm. it encourages me to keep doing it. Amazing. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. And even if like you could break that down even further, where even the process between selling a home and let's let's say that you had gone out and done like small steps along the way, you know, just to be able to say, hey, like let's celebrate. Mm -hmm. right. Let's go through it. All right, so we have our second myth understanding is it can't be done in my market. And the truth is, yes, it can, but you may need a new approach. So until you try an approach that worked in another market, you will never know if it can or cannot be done in yours. So once it has been done, no matter where, it's just a matter of finding out how that is possible in your world. Yeah, I think one thing I highlight, highlighted from this chapter of is if it has been done in another market, it can be done in your market. And apologies if you wrote that on, on this slide. And I think for me, it's really embracing the setbacks. It's not going to work right away, but if you have the right mindset and the mentality, it will work. And it's that persistence to just keep doing um, those small tasks to make you stand out in the market and to be that differentiating factor. I see it and just being consistent and persistent. That's Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. What's everyone's thoughts on this? Have you ever had a moment where you felt, oh, I just, I can't do this in this market or um, to me, this is very similar to the first misunderstanding, but just a bit more. Um, yeah. So I can speak to Barry about 13 years ago uh, when we were launching our market center, all the other old school brokers were going, oh, that, that, that system will never work in our market. It's not, it's not a sustainable model. And here we are 13 years later and we're thriving, you know, Keller Williams experience and Barry's doing well. So I think they were wrong. I'm pretty sure they were wrong, but they had a, they had a misunderstanding or a misunderstanding that, that it just wasn't going to work. Perfect example. It does with hard work and assistance, anything assistance is possible. And systems yeah. and models, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anything else anyone wants to add to that here? No. Okay, on to the next. All right, so we have come to our third myth understanding. And uh, myth, it would take too much time and effort and I would lose my freedom, sometimes people think. And the truth is that time and effort are not the deciding factors in success. So you do the best you can with the time you devote to your business. And when it takes you as far as you can, you then have a leverage issue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, using leverage to progress to the next level is definitely key to, to reaching that next level. Absolutely. And I, I think for me, what really stuck out in this chapter, I'm just looking down my notes is how I feel, uh, I feel like I, I say yes to so much. I put so much on my, my plate and I, I don't leverage myself enough. So for me, it's how can I still do the same volume of business right now, but have that time, taking that time back. And it's really about leveraging. And one of the things I wrote down are what are some things that you're doing that you don't need to be doing that you can leverage out to give that, to give your, to give myself a bit more freedom. Um, cause like many of us, I, you probably feel like all you do is, is work. <laughs> I know that's how I feel right now. And I want to take a little bit back of my freedom. So I am. I am losing a bit of my freedom. I know this is a bit contradictory to the myth understanding, but just real personal experience. I feel like I need a bit of that freedom back. So how I would love to open the floor. How have you all um, lost a bit of your freedom? And then what have you done to give it back? What does your work-life balance look like? So a really funny thing. I moved to get back to Keller Williams in December of 2021, so just six yeah. or months ago. Um, and I had in the process of importing my database from an Excel spreadsheet into command. I had been in that process for about six months because I just I get really bored and I can't handle it. And it's been sitting there bothering me, bothering me. Until I said, okay, forget it. I'm just gonna hire someone to do it for me. It took them like an hour and a half or a couple weeks ago and then they just did it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Perfect That's example of leveraging. Perfect example. I, that I should have done that like six months ago, but it's done. So 
it, it, it's so true. And I think it comes back to what is the cost of your time to however long it would take you, say 10 hours to pay someone to do it in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what about on here? What's what are how have you guys leveraged yourself? What are some um, situations that you've experienced? Come on, I'm sure there's some personal experiences here about getting your freedom back or just feeling like you're too stretched. How about you, Rachel? Have you ever hired out work that maybe $20 work that you really just don't enjoy doing? Yeah, I mean, we certainly have our, our database. I'm part of a team. Um, so all the leads that I have that come in get inputted um, uh, through our VA that just puts them into command. Um, I also run our staging and design team. So that's where I'm starting to leverage out a lot of the work that I don't need to be um, doing. And yeah, it's... Yeah. And how did that how did that work out for you? It It's it's allowing me to have slowly a bit more freedom. I think for me, I also have a bit of fear of, around letting go of certain things, of not being in control. And really control is an illusion. Um, we never always have, we don't have control. We never have full control. It's really an illusion or that's how I see it. So for me, it's working through that, being okay to let go of some of these tasks because I've worked so hard to get to where I am that it's kind of like, okay, I'm handing off, handing off my baby here, here right. it is. So for me, it's a bit of that um, psychological right. hurdle I need to overcome. Anyone else? Relatable. I'm in the process <laughs> right now of um, just getting my finances in order by hiring an accountant instead of doing everything myself like I have been for the last couple of years because of the time and it takes. I don't know why I, I have a control issue for sure, like to do everything myself and uh, and once I get that in order, I'm putting together a job description to hire my first uh, admin, which is very exciting. And, um, you know, there's so much that I spend my time on outside of speaking with clients and really, you know, the money making portion of um, our business and uh, really looking forward to getting some of that off my plate. So would have more freedom, definitely. <laughs> Agreed. And what are you going to do at that time when you have a bit more freedom? What's, what are some things you're going to do? Um, I'm, I really want to work on um, building a team in the next couple of years, just a little team. So I'm looking forward to getting kind of the rest of my business running a little more without me doing it every single second of the day and um, focus on building out um, my future team. So Love that. Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. Sort of brings me back to this, but yeah, I'm not skipping a, a no, message. <laughs> Anyone else? What is anyone else here? Anything? Okay. Huh. Let's move her along. And now we're going into the fourth common misunderstanding. So uh, the myth is it's too risky. I'll lose money when actually risk is in the direct proportion to how well you hold your incremental cost accountable to produce an incremental results. So it's basically it costs too much versus we can't afford it mindset. Um, they talk a lot, uh, Gary Keller wanted to describe this as, um, you know, if you guys have ever played the red light, green light game as a child, um, so that we, you know, and how we must hold our incremental expenses accountable to deliver incremental income. So with the red light, green light, have you found that when you have been leveraging? I, yes, I certainly have. And I think it's about taking those, those, those baby steps and really just tracking your, your finances, tracking what your net worth is. Um, being really purposeful. I know this is an area where I can certainly improve. I have an organized system, but there's still room for that. So you really know, okay, what's the cost associated with this? What's the outcome going to be? Um, does it make sense financially for, for my business model? Absolutely. And do you have a tracking system? So like the money that you're putting in, you're able to see how much profit is coming back from that investment. Yes, I do. Okay. So it really, it really helps just to be able to, um, to know exactly, exactly that. Any? I was just going to say the, uh, 
you know, say this, this is send a buck to make a buck. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's very true. You know, you can't, if you are holding back spending because it's too so expensive, you probably are affecting your net income. Yes. And you ask you to hold it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to uh, spend wisely, but it doesn't mean don't spend. Right. You have to spend. Yeah. Right. Noel's just saying you need to spend a buck to make a buck and just making sure that you're spending wisely. So what you're putting out there is coming back at least double. Right. Exactly. And I think, you know, coming back to that incremental, yeah. you know, don't go out there and like spend all of your money and put yourself in a situation yeah. where it's like really high risk, you know, mm -hmm. try something, see if it, you're getting the return on it and then you can continue on yeah. from there. Red light, green light. How do you feel about that, Fuji? I totally agree with you know, like you can spend money on all sorts of stupid stuff, but you have to spend it, but you have to choose like, you know, you can choose where you, yeah. where you get the most return out of it. Yeah. Um, and perfect example. Okay. You choosing to spend money on having someone input the leads into your database, and you could have probably used that time for calling some of them into the database, and that would have been way or literally anything. Or anything else, <laughs> or just choosing time for you, which is also important. It comes back to the freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. All right. So we are up to the fifth common myth understanding. And the myth is my clients will only work with me, only I can deliver a quality service. Where the truth is, your clients aren't loyal to you, they are loyal to the standards that you represent. So, you know, to become a millionaire real estate agent, you will have to hire help. And, but you're going to have to have like these unique standards that are the byproduct of your, your standards. So you set these standards to deliver and then you articulate that standard to your staff so they too can deliver at that experience. So I think this really comes back to with our leveraging, you know, yes. I think it really piggybacks on to like, you know, thinking that, you know, you have to do everything mm -hmm. when really you can leverage that out. And if you have a system in place where you are getting the results, you can teach others how to do that, like the people that you're hiring so that they can implement that same strategy. Yes. And I think for me here, it's really being genuine and authentic and really supporting your clients from A to Z um, and just having an authenticity around who you are. Um, to me, that's how I felt most when I read this is just being your true authentic self and that will attract, um, that will attract the clients and really have you stand out compared to others on top of what Crystal said, leveraging, making sure that you're organized and um, doing everything you can for your clients. Yeah. Any, anything else you'd add to that? Sean? No? Okay. I love how you bring up the authenticity. You know, there are so many agents out there, but each and every one of us, as we show up and we stand inside mm -hmm. our, our truth and like we're showing up as our true selves, where I find that like being able to make these connections with people, that like people hire agents for who they are yes as well as what they know but they have to have that connection it's such a huge process mm -hmm. and it's such a life-changing moment for them that you need to have that that authenticity yes. and that uh, that truth and that trust and building that relationship agreed and i'm almost going to say the, re the reverse of this is i i know when i started out i was uh, a really young agent and i had a lot of um hurdles that I had to go through mentally around that and kind of the, the drunk monkey on my shoulder, I'll call it like, oh, people who are much older than me aren't going to work with me because they're so much wise and they know best. And I was telling myself all these stories. And I think it's the latter of this is my clients won't work with me because of X. Um, and really once I was quite powerful. Once I let go of that and said, no, I'm, I, that's who I want to attract. I am capable of this. I know I'm, I am great at what I do. It's that was the next 20 plus clients I, I had, and it really had a block for me, um, to not allow that to come in for me into, um, into my world. And once I let go of that, 
it uh, was pretty powerful what happened. And uh, I just kept attracting, attracting that. And it's just really what the stories we tell ourselves can hold us back. Yeah, absolutely. Do you feel like you were showing up as a better version of yourself? I was. Because you was able to let go of all of that. It was. I find that like when we're telling the, these things in our head and all these doubts, like even the way that we hold ourselves, yes. even the way that we show up and the way that we connect with other people is completely it changes everything it it does yeah. and it's kind of the first thing the first slide the garbage in is what right it, it's garbage it, out. It, it garbage <laughs> out and that's exactly what you're telling yourself is also what you're projecting right. and i wasn't attracting that in my my life because i was blocked to it so just a perfect example so we're going to the last slide well not the last slide but the last myth understanding number six and so the myth is having a goal and not fully realizing it is a negative thing. And the truth is having a goal and not trying to achieve it is a negative thing. So, you know, one of the secrets to great success is to change your perspective on failure. Everyone experiences failures before they ultimately succeed. And some let failures stop them and some keep on trying. So, you know, I believe that. I believe the ultimate failure is you know, getting knocked out and never getting up, mm -hmm. you know, and in all honesty, you know, you can fail and fail and fail, but if you're, if you're still getting up, you are a success. I, you know, um, I think they put in, um, what's it? Um, first name now who I failed like 999 oh, times. I know. Henry, what's his name? Henry, the the runner, he was running the four mile minute and he just oh, kept yes. telling himself that he can't he can't do it. I think this might have been the beginning of the chapter, but relevant right now. He can't do it. I'm not going to do it. And then someone else did it. And then he realized that he actually can because he built up this wall saying that I, he can't do it. It was this impossible wall. And he just kept failing and failing. Um, and yeah, that might be yeah. who you're talking about, but maybe not. Yeah. Uh, no, it's same difference though. Yeah. Same difference. I mean, let's share who has gotten knocked down and knocked down and, you know, just starting like becoming an, an agent and well, like you yourself, Rachel, mm -hmm. of having to overcome these, these mindsets, these blocks that were stopping you from succeeding, you know, how many, and have had to get back up and continue going. Anybody want to share a story around that? Yeah, I, I, I go. I, um, my first few years of real estate, I joined a team. I was on a team what, that uh, was very, uh, they did certain things where like, you know, we did open houses, we did door knocking, we did all sorts of things. And a lot of that just wasn't me. Mm -hmm. Like that's not how I find clients. Mm -hmm. And but I went through the motion, I did all of it for the first few years and it sucked. Um, and I didn't get a heck of a lot out of it. Um, and there were, yeah, so my first few years in real estate were just awful. Mm -hmm. um, but after I started to find my strategy, I started to realize that actually I get way better clients from referrals. Yeah. And my personal activities that I do, that was, that's how I found the majority of my business instead. So now I'm in year six, 80% of the business <laughs> is referral, and I don't do any marketing, and that works for me. Amazing. 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 Yeah, just finding where, what works, right? And, yeah. you know, after, you know, failing, like at that point, did you ever feel yourself that you was like, wow, like this is not working. This is not where I'm supposed to be. Like, did you ever have that, those thoughts? Yeah, like tons. I think there was one summer and I like, like, I think it was like 2017 or something like that when the market corrected. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing like back-to-back -back open houses like, every weekend for the entire summer and afterwards i'm like this was an absolute waste of time but thank god i learned that i would never need to do that again right, right. exactly sure. oh that's wonderful I, I love hearing those stories of just like people just overcoming these fears or setbacks and just getting up and like going out there and like if something is not working you know of course at first nothing really works great you you need to give it some time to like to see if it is going to work but if you're finding that after months on end like it's not working to sort of pivot and see what else can you do like what else is going to work for you anybody else want to share some stories in regards to you know any setbacks or any um time that they had felt like they were failing when really 
you aren't failing at all. You you were just needing to pivot in your business. Um, it's not not so much a story um, for me, but what resonated with me with with this myth understanding was that um, like success never happens without failure, right? So it's so easy to to fail and just give up and say that it didn't work. But um, you know, with me having you know, I, I got four kids at home. So when, when they come home and they don't do well and stuff that, you know, I'm always, uh, you know, I'm their biggest advocate to, to keep going and, and, uh, and, and keep at it. So I got to, that, that's also got to resonate with me as well. I got to sometimes take my own advice because I'm, I'll have a great day going out and door knocking. Um, and then the next day I'm like, I really don't want to do it. So I'm like procrastinating. I'll find something else to do rather than do it. But I think for me is I always like take a look at the positive, right? Like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get a deal out of this, or I'm going to get a meeting out of this. But when it, when I don't after two and a half hours or my time's done and door knocking, okay, what's the positives? Okay. So I didn't get a deal, but I got four ads that I got into my, um database that's going to go my monthly mailers that are happy to hear from me um i've had more face time talking about real estate with people like i'm already i I feel comfortable already in a public setting so now that even strengthens my strength about speaking continuous conversation and just constantly putting yourself out there this is not an easy business especially you know uh, for me i've had some background experience in sales and customer care um, so I'm comfortable there, but real estate's tough and you cannot sell real estate just sitting at your desk and not putting yourself out there and making contacts and being in front of people or calling people and speaking to somebody. So even though like, again, I, I don't get that listing or I don't get that person that wants to buy with me when I'm out two and a half hours, there's still something that you got to try to pull from that failure to spin that into your, in your mind that that was a you know, a success. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's such a good example. And just a a quick little uh, tip here is that like when you are starting to feel that way and like Roger, you have, like you said, you have four kids. Like sometimes I like to say to myself, because you know, you have that doubt set in and just like ask your yourself, you know, would I tell my kids this? What would I tell my kids in this situation? Yeah. I think one thing I'll add to that is it, there are those days where you, you feel like you the output of the work you get, you do. And then the return is just so, so slim, but I really do feel like the actions that we're all choosing to do pays off in one way or another and really shows up. I truly believe that. I know I have felt, felt that I've, I've done a bold 100 and didn't get one appointment, but then at the end of the month, there was multiple people who who reached out to me. And I think just the actions that we choose to do each day will come back and and reward us. And that's what keeps me motivated is, okay, I didn't get anything today, but I will because I'm doing the right actions to push me forward. Yeah, that's a great example. Thanks, Roger. Yeah, that's a great example. All right. Great. So, um, so one of the quotes at the back um, was from uh, Russell Shaw. Uh, his sales volume is fifty billion dollars, and he says people need to stop uh, wasting focus on what they could have done and focus on what they are can do now. And I just wanted to uh, put this on a slide and just see if anybody else resonates with this, uh, like whether you know just you know, wasting their, their time and focusing on, you know, oh, while well, looking at like what, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that, but you're here now, you know, what can you do now yeah. instead of not taking action? I love that. And not comparing yourself to others, really, right. just choosing your own steps and your own path and what you would like instead of self-comparing ourselves to, okay, oh, this person's this far, I should be there um, and all that, and just choosing what's best for you and taking the right steps to go forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's, um, let's go. here we go. So yeah, thank you guys all for showing up today. And, you know, as a conclusion, you know, we will be following 
um, on with this book. Uh, we will be going up to the third part three and continuing step by yeah. step. And Rachel will be joining us as our special guest. Does anybody have any comments or like aha uh -huh moments that they would like to share with us? All right, well, fantastic. Well, if you need to get a hold of either Rachel or I, I'd like to, you know, really dive deeper into some of these myth understandings, please feel free to reach out to us and um, we'll, we'll be back next time. Fuji, did you have any comments? No, I'm not just going to Okay, <laughs> excellent. All right, guys, thank Thanks, you guys. so much. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Can you know how to stop it? <laughs>